Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? I'm Michael Seven Michael, and you're watching Foodcaster. Foodcaster having a relationship with food and enjoying it. And today we have in the studio Sam eats plants. Hi. Sam, can I say that you're a physical trainer as well as a dietitian? Is that fair? We'll say personal trainer. Okay. And we'll say nutrition counselor. Yes. Woohoo! And I would like to give a shout out to Sound Shark for this wonderful microphone. So, Sam, a lot of time. Oh, a couple things that what I want to cover today. One is um, pain management. Okay. And different things that could cause pain within the body. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that I would like to cover today is supplements. Okay. Supplements are great, but sometimes unnecessary if you could just find out what foods to eat. So we want to explore that too. Okay. But first let's go with pain management, different things that cause pain in the body. Well, do you have like a particular like question or a, a particular idea in your head? Because there's so many, everyone's in pain. Well, one thing that inspired me was inflammation. Okay. I was in a car accident and started getting a lot of inflammation on a consistent basis. Okay. And then I learned about the joys of turmeric. Okay. Now, um, just raiding my my uh, little area, uh -huh. I picked this up, <laughs> this whole thing of uh, turmeric there. But... I didn't. I didn't like adding that to food. I felt it was too much, too powerful. And what are you talking about? Uh, listen, I'm not used to it yet. Adding turmeric to food? Yeah, it was like a little. Ain't you West Indian? I yeah yeah. When I, I don't understand any of this right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I'm not eating, um, you know, curry, curry, <laughs> potato, and chana and ting. Yes, and ting them. <laughs> and, and ting them. You know, I, I I don't want to eat that all the time. So, like, what else can I add to that? To add to that, or what else can you do that's anti-inflammatory? Well, what else could I do with the turmeric that could taste good? Let's go for Okay, it. so first of all, all curries, no, there are no curries that are just turmeric. The oh. curries are a mix of different spices with turmeric as a base. Oh. So, okay. and then there's Chinese curry, there's Indian curry, there's Thai curry, there's Caribbean curry, and all those are kind of different. Okay. In general, in general. Okay. It's like turmeric, cumin, coriander. Okay. Garlic. Mm hmm That's like for real. Okay. And then sometimes, mostly Indian, because like their curries will have like 26 <laughs> ingredients they implant. Okay. Especially with Indian curry, it will, it will have like cardamom, maybe star anise, fennel, okay. um, onion. I heard fennel's great. Yes, it is. It I'm is. talking about like you can chew the fennel seeds for like upset stomach, like a little bit nauseous. Just chew mm -hmm. the seeds. Um, and in Thai curry, it's like lemongrass. It's like a certain type of mushroom. It's lime. Mm -hmm. um, so these are different ways that you do curry. It's never just a turmeric. So I need to change it up. and see. You, you need to mix it. You need to mix it. Together. It's not just a turmeric. You okay. need to put the other stuff too. And some fresh herbs. Parsley can work. Cilantro can work. Depending okay. on what type of curry feeling and taste you want. Okay. Um, and then also the, the and, buzz. And this is good for inflammation. All, all the different... Uh, spices in general, and especially turmeric, especially ginger. Okay. Um, yeah, greens. Now, are you against stuff like this, where <laughs> liquid form or not necessary? Oh, well, you want to go through ingredients? Like, uh -oh, yes, do I it. feel like Let's you should it. know this by now. What? I, I messed up okay, on this so one. Okay, so what the hell? Okay, what is this? <laughs> it says liquid turmeric. Okay, why is turmeric not an ingredient? What do you mean it's not an ingredient? I'll read them. Water. What? Is number one. Okay. So, well, okay. which we could figure out. Mm -hmm. Xylitol. Do you know xylitol? It's a sweetener that comes from, I think, tree bark. Okay. Um, then natural flavor. Boy, listen. Okay, okay. We're not starting off good. Water, xylitol, and natural flavor. Citric acid, which is to preserve, potassium sorbate, which is preservative that actually gives me a stomach ache, and lohangua, which is uh, a Chinese herb, but they use the extract of it. Mm. So where's the turmeric? 
What do you mean? It's got to be in there, no? No. All it has to be is less than 2% uh, for them to put it on here. This is crazy. <gasps> oh. They use curcumin. Oh. I get what's happening. Because it's so little that they use. So mm -hmm. it's not in the ingredients. But they use. They show the, the milligrams of the curcumin. Curcumin in a lab they found was the active ingredient in turmeric that has all these anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory properties. And so what economics did with that information is, mm. oh, let's take the curcumin out and, and make it super and do only curcumin and we'll make it in a supplement form. But in study after study, when they compare turmeric as a whole root or as the powder versus the curcumin that was taken out the turmeric works way better not i mean beyond way better at times a hundred times better so i'm better off with the actual yeah with this yeah for sure there you go for sure mm. so pains if you're talking about inflammation you kind of want to are you asking where's inflammation come from well just different pains that you could use different things to to make better the, to make better yeah. a lot of the whatever relieves pain one place typically can, can relieve pain another place okay. if, if you're having a headache mm -hmm. um, if you it the headaches kind of different because okay. a lot of that has to do with vein dilation okay. and how much blood is flowing and how quickly okay. um, but you need to do things like have <laughs> Caffeine can alleviate a headache, okay. but if you take caffeine every day, it's the reason why you have headaches. So okay. it's um, a line to walk. So let's say someone has coffee every single day. Okay. They probably need to get off of it for two or three weeks for their brains to come to equilibrium and stop having a headache from not having coffee. Okay. And then once that happens and they don't have coffee anymore, when they have a headache, they can figure out what's going on and then they could take coffee as a medicine okay. to relieve the headache. Interesting. You understand? Wow. Because mm -hmm. coffee is medicinal. Uh, food, foods are medicinal. You just have to know what they do for you. But caffeine will help with the headache. Or it doesn't have to come from coffee. It can come from green tea. It can come from white tea. It can come from red leaf tea. It can come from black tea. Um, all those have caffeine as well. But if you're already on a caffeine regimen, That's not it's not going to do anything. And then when you don't have coffee, you're going to have intense headaches. Because you've already trained your body to have very dilated veins because of the caffeine, and now they're they're smaller or regular sized, wow. and now that hurts. So, like headache is kind of different. Like, I I would never take those like aspirins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take those at all. I would just try to figure out well, why is my head hurting? Am I tired? Am I dehydrated? Am I worried? Am I stressed? You know, these are the first questions to ask yourself if you're not. A regular caffeine drinker, because right. if you are, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't apply the same way. Mm. I don't People know. that say um, back pain and will that all that be from inflammation causing that? Sure. Well, a, I guess it could be I muscular mean, as well. Let me tell you why a lot of people have back pain. Mm. Because we sit down at work, we sit down to to travel, and we sit down when we're home to watch TV. Mm. We're not standing. So what starts happening is we start tightening our hip flexors which are right where our, our legs meet our waist mm -hmm. and those are tight because mm -hmm. and because those are tight then we start elongating our glutes mm -hmm. so now we're off balance then to compensate it when we stand up a lot of people will have a slight tilt forward mm -hmm. because of constant sitting because of constant uh, sitting now, now, I'm, now i'm concerned we also did that with our necks and now oh my gosh especially when i look around <laughs> on the subway and, and i see all the people with the phones yeah. But only because I already know, because a right. decade ago I was a personal trainer before right. everyone was on their phones like this. Right. But I learned about it as a personal trainer, how so many people go forward because of the computer screen. But now, even when we're not in front of the computer screen at home, You're still doing that. we're doing this, we're looking wow. down like that. And so what we're going to find is as people get older, you're going to find people having this hump here. Okay. And, and their, normal, their normal gaze is here because this is where we're training our bodies to be. Wow. Even when people like, when you see old people kind of like hunched like that, mm -hmm. it's like a certain posture they decided to have over time and eventually the muscles and everything are just forming to this posture you gave yourself. Wow. So now it's hard to come out of it and you don't. Like now this is your normal. 
Wow, we're going to be a generation of... I'm, I'm really... Wow. I'm seeing it. I'm like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? I'm like, I'm the only one worried. <laughs> um, but back pain. Will we grow an extra thumb? Extra no, fingers? I don't think so. We lost yeah. our sixth finger. Yeah. Some people get them. Some people still have them. Some people get them. I At least they have a little nub. Well, because they got it taken off. Oh. Yeah, people that have those numbs here because they got it taken off when they were a kid. Can you keep them? Yeah. But no one wants to. Would it be functional? Um, apparently, most of them are not. Uh, like you can't even control it. Uh, and that's little. So that's kind of pointless then. Yeah, it's not like your real pinky. Uh, that would be cool. Like imagine. You'd be the game. You could like a twelve-string guitar and like what you could do with that. <laughs> um, but with yeah, with back pain, before you try to just alleviate the pain because the pain is there to tell you something, mm -hmm. and that's another thing um, that we don't realize as a culture. Like, our pains are here for a reason, and if you numb them, then you're messing up the messages the body's supposed to tell you. That pain is supposed to tell you, you need to stretch, or you need to run, or you need to lay down, or you need to stand up, whatever it is. But that pain is there for you to, to do this. <laughs> like, the pain is there for that reason. Right. And if you go ahead and take aspirins and painkillers, and it numbs, and you just start, to keep, you keep doing the thing that gave you the pain in the first place. Well, then you're just setting yourself up for <laughs> a real issue in 10 years, wow. you know? So more than, like, what do we do for pain, um, one, we should feel our pain and think, how do I, what, what am I doing wrong that's creating this pain, and how do I fix that? And then you do that. So that's part of back pain. Lots of people have back pains, and that's a huge reason. Our posture is a huge, huge reason why so many Americans and people in Western culture have back pain. We don't stand upright the majority of the day at all at all like we're mostly sitting wow we're That's mostly true. sitting and especially if you have a commute you yeah know, subway or if you're driving or in your car. Stuck, stuck in traffic yeah or in your car so you know actually a lot of men have a lot of problems like uh um, problems? Pro a lot of problems <laughs> With um bus drivers and taxi drivers because they're sitting they're sitting too long yeah, they know it's it's a real issue. Like yeah. it, it's a real issue. It's a medical issue. Yeah, a lot of people have <laughs> sciatica. Like people have like the sciatic nerve problem, Oof. and it's like sharp. But that also is a lifestyle issue. It's not just because oh you kind of got older. We need to start hunting, running around, picking we need, berries. We need to be on our feet. I mean, uh, the president of Brooklyn has a standing desk now he just really got into health and like he has a standing desk and all that oh wow and then dr michael greger who has the nutrition facts stuff mm -hmm. and the book about like eating and health he has a walking desk so it's like he's at it he's works and he's moving and that's wow. what he does and i think that's uh i'm not saying i want that but i think it's a it's a good direction to go towards because we are in this modern world and we do need to use our computers or we are left behind and they are important but we have to figure out how to be well in this society because we are living in the generation that's supposed to die before their parents so really yeah the, this this n the newest kids generation z and some millennials this is slated as the first generation generation z not really millennials generation z so they're they're younger uh, wow. who will not reach the, the age of their parents. How is that possible when we got shows like Foodcaster and uh, there's so much information out there? I think, well, the estimate is not coming from, it's not including the future information and people being receptive to it. They're uh, literally just looking at all other data that's harder, you know, more tangible data. Right. I think about those things too because I feel a lot of these like 15, 16, 17 year olds are going to be more well about health and their own well-being. They should live to 100 plus. Yeah, but those are, that's, they're not taking that into consideration. What they're taking into consideration is like uh, the, the baby boomer, boomers age and how they're dying. Then they're taking into consideration Generation X, Generation Y. Like they're looking at that. They're looking at a trend. Wow. And so I think if it wasn't for the internet, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, if it wasn't for the internet, definitely. Yeah, would, but the, yeah. the internet is, especially social media, mm -hmm. the last, I would say, 15 years have really shifted what we can all know. You yeah. know, and those things, we, yeah. we didn't have that knowledge. So they are right, but then they can't compute 
the the potential of what we might learn, self learn, on the internet and in social media. Right. So it is well, really interesting. Well, look, look how much we know about food more than our great grandparents. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I say this in a weird way because the old country, the old ways, they knew a lot more than us. Yeah. But because of tradition and culture versus just data. Data. We have we know, data. We know data. But we don't know that other aspect. We know data. It. Like, an example, like, uh, you know, my family would say things like, oh, you know, this bush country, this, and you take, the, you know, to take this, you do this, and th and then you can put it on your cut. <laughs> and they don't have any science to why right. they're doing it, but they do it. And it works at least most of the time, enough for it to be repeated. Right. And then, 50 years later, it's like, boop, 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 boop. Okay, let's do the study. We're going to have 100 people in the study. We're going to take this and da, da. And now we can prove <laughs> that this works and it's effective. Right. And that is our right. validation that, it's, that it works. And, and, and it's real. And it's real. So anything right. else is like, well, you can't trust it. Though it had already existed in hundreds or even thousands of years prior. Right. But it's like it's not real until we do our right. gold standard Western um, um, science on it. Interesting. So, yes, we have more data. Mm -hmm. But they just did things that they knew without knowing, you know? Right, yeah. It's different. It's different. Yeah. So even with pain... I mean, even with like like marijuana, which is a really really effective pain reliever, but still, if your body's giving you pain, you're supposed to feel it because you need to know what's going on. And when you dull it, you don't know what's going on. It it goes away. If you're having indigestion and you're trying to get rid of it, then you're then you stop focusing on what did that to me. How did I get that? And then think back, well, what did I eat today? What did I eat yesterday? Or am I feeling off today? Am I mad at somebody? Mm -hmm. And we miss all that because we try to get rid of the pain. But if you want to get rid of the pain more naturally, like apple cider vinegar is great for stomach pains. I mean, I mean, amazing. I shouldn't just say great. It is so good. <laughs> Raw apple cider vinegar, like a swig of it, like a shot. Take it down. You're good in half an hour or something like that. It's really good. Or, like, I'm I... I'm gonna take some now. I have a, uh... I'm hungry. ...year and a half long knee <laughs> injury from playing soccer, and, um, warmed turmeric wraps, mm -hmm. and, like, then wrapping your, your, the area with plastic, mm -hmm. that's, like, uh, it's turmeric mixed with warm castor oil. Okay. And, yeah, you rub that stuff on, it's gonna stain up all your clothes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's an effective pain reliever without giving you any of the stuff that's bad for your liver, that's bad for your kidneys, the way that painkillers do. Hmm. So these are other ways you can... People have some real pains. People live in chronic pain every day. And so for people in chronic pain, it's unfair to say, just feel that pain because you can't function. But it's also unfair to, to have morphine and Vicodin. Oh, come on. What's the word? Vicodin. Mm -hmm. To have morphine and Vicodin in, in, in their daily diet because it's going to mess with their brains, mess with their cognitive abilities, mess mm -hmm. with their motor skills, and also mess with and that. addiction. Mm hmm All of that. So you can do turmeric rubs on the body. I know acupuncture has been effective for enough people for, and it's affordable enough that people can go and try to, to do it themselves. So these are some other things you can do for pain, but there's all these variants of pain. And really, where is your pain? that you want. I'll tell you a story. It's really interesting. So when I was pregnant, I went to a prenatal yoga class on my first one. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that this teacher liked to do is say, how's everyone feeling? What's going on with your body? And so one person, now I didn't have symptoms. Okay. I didn't realize, I, there was a lot I didn't know. Like right. I didn't know it was my first child. I didn't read any books because I'm, like <laughs> I'm just like that. I'm like, these books don't apply to me and how I live my life. So this woman's like, oh, I'm having this back pain right here. And then another one's like, my sciatic nerve. And another one's like, I, it's really hard for me to sit cross-legged in my hips. And, then, and they're saying all this, they're saying all this. And then I'm the last one. And I'm like, I don't feel anything. Uh, I'm fine. They're like, really, that's nothing? I'm like, no. Two days later, it was like I, have it, I had all those pains they were talking about. <laughs> 
And I believe mm -hmm. it's because they talked about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was supposed to have. I didn't go through the books and I didn't have pregnant people around me. So I was ignorant as to these pregnancy symptoms one is supposed to have. The only thing I knew is like, you're supposed to have morning sickness and maybe mm -hmm. have crazy cravings. And it's in every TV show, movie, yeah. so yeah. you already knew. And I didn't have cravings either. Right. But yeah, it was two days later and I'm like, oh, my hip. And then like something else, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I taking on <laughs> their pain? And that's another thing that to talk about when it comes to pain, like taking on what people have put in your mind about what you're feeling. Mm. And sometimes I can augment something that is really a mild pain. Yeah. It's for real. But you gotta analyze it for yourself. Yeah, I think even with um, foods, if everyone likes to say, mmm, this is great, mmm. Yeah, it's true. You tend to, Yeah. it tastes a little better. Yeah. Then it probably normal will. I now, mean, if it's terrible, you'd still be like, yo, this is terrible. I've worked in restaurants for like 15 years. <laughs> so one of the things that is, is constant uh -huh. is we know if we can get this person to get a glass of wine, everyone gets a glass of wine. Interesting. If the first person gets a cocktail, people typically will get a top cocktail. Mm. That's what happens. And so it's like one of the things as, as servers, the idea is I'm going to get this person to get this steak because then everyone else can get it. Mm. This is how we are as humans, I guess. Group think. Group think. <laughs> I've seen it happen. The, the scarlet letter. Mm. Well, this is what happened. But this is what happened. Well, this is what happened. Well, this is, you, I think you mentioned this off the air. If you say something enough. Yeah. It becomes be, true. It becomes true. And unfortunately, there's a lot of things that are said in reference to nutrition, reference to yeah. food, that are just not true. Yeah. But it's just said all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're a vegan, you have to make sure that you get enough nu nutrients. And, like, no one gets enough nutrients because we live in a the Western world. society. The world. And we eat donuts and croissants and, like, <laughs> french fries and bagels. And people don't like vegetables. And they don't have their kids eat vegetables because they're, oh, my kid is really picky. I can't get them to eat it. So let me give them some garbage. Instead of saying, you're eating this or you're going to bed hungry. Like, how dare you mm -hmm. then tell a group of people who are <laughs> eating more plants. Right. We have to make sure that you're getting enough <laughs> nutrients. Wow. Did you say that to the to the mother with the five year old who only eats hot dogs and cheese noodles and fast food? Did you mention that? Right. Oh, you didn't. Right. Oh, is is that nutritious? I missed that. I missed what that was. That's a very good point. There are. You know what? I never thought of that before because a bunch of people are very concerned in my life. <laughs> like, are, you, are you eating well? And it's like. <laughs> Yeah, when you look at it, of all the junk that people eat on a regular basis. It's like, who, who wow. are you talking to? That's interesting. But you can easily be blinded. Mm. It's like, well, I, you had it when you were a kid. How come it's not good for your kid? You didn't know what you were doing. Oh, oh, this, like, this asthma I have now, that's, that was, <laughs> that's what happened. That's what happened because you gave that to me. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's everything. It seems like... Anything that veers too much of what we've decided is normal, it's like, be careful. Even though we're living in, uh, we're the sickest mm -hmm. society, mm -hmm. we're the most obese society, we're the most malnourished but overfed society, and yet it's like, oh my gosh, you don't want <laughs> Wow. What's going to happen? You want to eat more salads and smoothies? It's not good for you. Are you having enough calories? You're overeating. <laughs> you are overeating. I have been told, I mean... I have had people in my face <laughs> who visibly, right. visibly, are not healthy. Mm. Whether it's the bags under their eyes, their yellow skin, overweight, blotchy skin, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Who okay. are trying to tell me, well, I don't know if that's really good for you to eat all those oranges. You just finished a bottle of wine by yourself in six hours, and you're worried about the oranges I'm eating. Wow. Like, understand that. Right. But they're living in this um, in this disconnect. What what's the word I'm looking for? Imaginary world. No, it's when when uh, when you you the information presents itself as true, but your understanding. Oh, you're in denial. Not denial, but like <laughs> you are in denial. But it's something that people call co cognitive dissonance. That's what it is. Oh, cognitive. Cognitive dissonance. dissonance. 
you're worried about me eating six oranges, which we know is full of vitamins, and you just finished, um, this is real, this is a real person. You cleared a bottle of wine by yourself in a six hour period. Mm. What, what are we really talking about right now? <laughs> That's too much sugar. That's too much alcohol. Right, and sugar. Because there's sugar. Alcohol turns into sugar. I mean, it, it's, it's so much. It's so much. It's like, mm. your, your son is small. He needs to eat more. My son eats more than your son, and his food is nutritious. He's getting taken care of. Like, literally eats more than grown people. Wow. But, but it's nutritious food. So yeah. it's different. Oh, he's not getting chubby fat? Because you've, you've normalized that for kids. Right. He's not supposed to be. Right. And it kind of hurts me. Oh, he's so cute with the chubby cheeks. What are you feeding that child? Yeah. It's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. You're hurting it. Yeah. Or her. Or her. Or them. What's your social media say? You can find me at Sam Eats Plants. Um, and that's Instagram? On, on Instagram. On Twitter. <laughs> Are, are you consistent on those platforms? I'm consistent more on Instagram. Can people oh, on Instagram? Yeah, not on Twitter. Okay. But I need to get consistent on Twitter. Okay. I want to. Uh, you should. Set a goal for yourself. And I'm Michael7Michael on Instagram. And you can check out photos of food and different things on The Real Foodcaster on Instagram. Yeah. This is awesome. I hope people can check us out on cable and all that other stuff. Um, as far as the information on the show and network and all that goody stuff, sevnetwork.com, sevnetwork.com, and you could find all the information about the show and different things. Um, any conventions or anything you're doing? That I'm doing? No, I'm but talking, there's, there's some coming up that I want to attend. Yeah, but I'm not doing anything, not lately. No? No, not right now. No, no, no. Um, I think I may need to detox. I mean, we all do, so yes. Because of the traveling and all that stuff, I think I'm going to take some things out of my diet the next couple of weeks. I, th I think I think it's about that. I can feel it. And that's great. I can feel, hmm, I need to yeah. assess what's going on. Mm. <laughs> Something's not moving correctly. Something. Or or it's good, but I feel like I'm at a crossroads. I mean, I came back from my trip, and I definitely went on like, okay, no processed sugar, get off of wheat, eat more salad, stop playing around. Wow. And I'm glad because, like, my skin cleared up. And it was looking crazy. And you can feel, the, you can feel when you need to do that and mm -hmm. when you need to go back and... Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. If you're honest with yourself. Yeah. And in tune. Yeah. And, and that's the goal. The goal is, bit, is to know about food, be in tune, and make adjustments as you go. Yeah. That's it. And be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. not, not, not be a fashion thing. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of food fashion going on. You know. <laughs> and, and if someone makes that a thing, you heard it here first, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Call my lawyers. Consistent. Yes. Consistent. Consistent. All right. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, we will see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. You're watching.